Let's find out how Jane George took an idea while traveling around Europe and turned it into a business that had over 40 staff, a board of directors, and huge aspirations to go global. Come, let's go meet Jane. Jen George, welcome to Village TV. Lovely to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Now, Jen, you turned a bad experience looking for part-time work into a very successful business here in Australia. Um, what made you think that an online jobs board would be something Australians would really be keen for? Um, it wasn't so much a, what, what would the market want. It was more, I think a little bit more selfish than that. It was, oh, I need a job. <laughs> How do I get one? <laughs> Let's do this. Um, okay. And, and, and it's, I, I, it's now become one of the most popular job boards in Australia. Did you ever think it would become this popular that quickly? No, to be honest. I think what makes us different is that we're more of a marketplace and we're a data-driven model. So we'll collect everything from age to smoking to access to a vehicle, personality type, work history, etc. And actually match them specifically to roles that suits them in instantly, which has never been done before for businesses. Wow. And, and tell me, you've got to tell me the story. Now, your dad became your first investor. How did you convince him that this is something he should put his money behind? Partners in crime for life. But, <laughs> now you can't get rid of him. I, know. I don't know who's happier about that yet. Um, no, basically, I got, got the site off the ground as a very, very basic blog. Um, did that myself. Got about 300 uni students, a couple of clubs using it just okay. from... Posters up after work at uni, duct tape, horrible marketing technique. Um, but it was then, successful, right? Well, yeah, got 300 uni students on board. And then... You tested your market. Exactly. Beautiful. And uh, got a couple of clubs using it just by hitting the streets on the weekend with an iPad, sign up, check this out. Got it working. And from there went, great, how do we make this successful? You know, how do we get it out there? How do we get people using it? Yes. Um, so went to a marketing um, agency and they said, great, give us half of your business and we'll do your marketing. And I was like, you're crazy, what? <laughs> So I went to dad, I was like, this can't be right. He's like, no, that's definitely not right. Um, okay. And then we kind of went, right, well, I'll put a business plan together. And we argued for about 45 minutes on a plane to Melbourne. And um, I ended up getting him on board and believing in the idea. And um, he's been with it since then. Yeah. Wow. And it's been fun? Super fun. I uh, wouldn't be doing anything else. So we were approached about five months old um, by programmed integrated workforce to invest in the company. Yep. Um, they bought 27.5% for $5 million. Um, it was a strategic partnership where they brought a wow. lot of knowledge from the industry, uh, access to candidates, businesses to grow the marketplace, which is vital to our traction to date. Yep. Um, and that's where we are today. Beautiful. Now, OneShift has over 170,000 Facebook friends and likes. <laughs> Something that's huge, it's astronomical. Um, how have you been able to grow your social media presence? And I guess in some way grow your online platform through social media. What's exciting about OneShift is it's not about advertising, it's about connecting people. So it's about the people of OneShift. So what's made it successful is really highlighting the skills, the people, you know, the stories of um, Becky, who's a graphic designer who wants to pick up a couple of shifts here yep. and there, to the, we've got a, fire, uh, sorry, a policeman who wants to save up for his wedding. So he's working full time as a policeman and on the weekends picking up stuff so that he can actually afford his dream wedding with his fiance. I keep going to say wife. <laughs> soon to be wife. Soon to be wife. Yeah, so it's the exciting things like that where you, you see amazing stories about individuals and getting them out there and saying this is enabling people to live their lives. You know, our, yeah. our vision is for the global workforce to get a life. So yes. it's enabling people. I guess students in many ways can go to school and still pay for a lot of things and Definitely. easier to get jobs. And yeah, for businesses, it's an unutilized workforce. People are in uni doing courses or they're you know doing another full-time job or part-time job and they just want to fit things in. You've got mothers returning to work who have these amazing degrees and skill sets yeah. who just want to do something that actually uses their brain and you know challenges them for a couple of hours every now and Beautiful. then. And it's bringing amazing skill sets to businesses so that they can ramp up right down to suit what's so going on. And I'm sure you must have a lot of SMEs that are clients because yes. let's be honest, SMEs, you don't always need a full-time staff member, yep. but you might need someone one day a week, you know, and yep. you're not going to go to seek.com or that, you know. It's not, too expensive. Too expensive, unnecessary, yep. but... On your platform, it makes it accessible and easy, right? Definitely. It's 30 bucks. You post your job. You straight away get instant matches, instant profiles with photos, work history, education history. You can contact that person straight away. And we've seen the success in this. We've seen a barista position posted. They contacted their matches and had somebody serving coffees within 27 minutes of posting the role. So 20. for 30 bucks, it saves an hour of the business owner's time. 
it gets the person that they need in front of them straight away right. and it means that they can just get on with life, get on Beautiful. with business. Make get on with making money. Exactly. <laughs> no, come on. You, you've done excessively well. You've, you've built up this uh, great platform that is needed in our economy. Um, they always say successful people have good daily routines. Do you have one? <laughs> uh, probably the most consistent thing is uh, catching up with my dad. Okay. Um, so brekkie in the morning, what's going on, what's happening in, in work and life. So it's a, it's a good foundation to have. But from there, it's all over the shop. And <laughs> flexibility is key, I think. Yep. So traveling around Australia, seeing clients, see, you know, talking at events. Um, I think what's great is that we have a lot of awareness about what we're doing out there now. So, you know, we're speaking at the Admin Data Day, which we're against uh, with other people like in Google and Qantas yeah. and Woolworths. And so, we're, you know, we're playing around with the big guys now because we are collecting so much data. Oh, come on, you just raised $5 million. <laughs> you know, you've got you, you to take yourself seriously. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got an amazing team making it all happen. We've got a team of about 45 now, our Sydney office, anything from, you know, CTO, developers, designers, accounts, admin. PR, SEO, sales, you know, you name it, we've got it and we're making it happen, so. Wow, that's incredible. I, I, I cannot say it's such an inspira- inspiring story. Let's talk about your customers for a moment, like because they're the number one thing, right? Always. Always the number one thing. What do, you, what do you think you've learned the most from as you've grown talking and engaging with your customers? Um, our th- uh, I guess ethos is to have a small business mentality with a big business reach. So having 36... So a small business mentality... Big business reach. Big business reach. No, I heard... <laughs> so <laughs> you, 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 look busy, you look big, but you operate smartly, efficiently, quickly. Is that what yep. you're referring to? Okay, exactly. Cool. So we want to give you know, um, our clients the one-on-one customer service. We want to give them the best experience that they can get, okay. not only on the website, but with our reps. If they have a problem, we want to know about it. We want to fix it, and we will fix it that day if it's possible, yeah. and come straight back to them and say, look, the site, you didn't like that green button. It's now blue. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> because you've got to keep everyone happy. And if yes. you can get that right, it, that blue button may change you know, 300 other businesses' lives for some reason. So, All right. Um, and so a lot of split testing? Yeah, a lot of A-B splits. Um, what okay. we find is that we'll throw things out um, and we'll wait and see what happens. And we're very data-driven in the fact that we track everything, we watch everything that's going on, and it allows us to actually be quite nimble in our responses and means that we can actually you know, see a 3% increase on Tuesday, which will you know, affect so many other things, which is so great that we can have that you know, instant results from that. Yeah. Wow. One of the, let's talk about learning, because as you said, you know, you say, oh, I'm going to put in the green button, but yep. it works out that the blue button's better. better. Yeah. But you know, you don't know that. So yep. What are some of the biggest learnings that mm. you've had to go through from you know, having an idea and having a passion, go, having experience, to yep. having 45 staff members? What, are the, what do you think has been your biggest learning curve? Um, have values. It's taken two and a half years to actually have t- cust- uh, our business values, right? Which is <laughs> probably the worst thing we could have done. Um, but, you know, it's test, fail, learn. And it's about getting out there, trying lots of small things, getting the traction. And is that having a culture of test, fail, learn? Test, fail, learn, definitely. So these okay. values are a part of our culture. It's about, okay. And it's enabling our team to actually use these every day as tools for what they do in their day-to-day life. So the second one's no bullshit. So they pull each other up and say, sorry, you can't do that, no bullshit. Um, sorry, wow. sorry. No, it's good. <laughs> I, I, you've got to ask, do you guys do that back home? Do you really call each other up in your businesses? Yeah. Because I feel... You can't be everywhere at once, right? No, you can't. You've got to, you can't be the one instilling the culture and the values every day. But if you can enable everyone to do their job the best possible way and say, hey, here are the tools, you know, test, fail, learn, no bullshit, um, make it happen, don't wait for it to happen. So we're fast. We try to be fast and get some sleep in there somewhere. Um, But then also team first. And I think that's really important because you've got to back your teammates at the end of the day. You spend more time with your team than you do your family. And yes, the customer's always right, but you've got to act as a team, act as one unit in the marketplace and be together. So I'm curious. There's no bullshit um, and act, fail, test, act, test, fail. Test, fail, learn. Test, fail, learn, that one. (laughs) Um, It sounds like you're encouraging your team to take... More leadership, more, yes. more, giving them more opportunity to make a decision, allowing them to fail, and yeah. allowing the team to call it and then react to it and improve it. Yes. So every thirty days, our whole team climbs into the boardroom. 
uh, or squishes in now, <laughs> and everyone has to present the last 30 days what they achieved, the next 30 days what their um, KPIs are that they're setting for themselves, yep. and then they have to actually announce what failures that they had or stuff ups in the last month. And it means that it's humanizing or normalizing the fact that, look, we wanted to go try this, we stuffed it up, whoops, but we learned this, so now we're doing this. And it's it's an educating everyone and it's making everyone being able to grow as a team because, you know, I'm 24, I've got no idea, but, you know, I'm learning from everyone and my own mistakes as well. And if we can all learn together and develop as a team together, we can grow with the business, so. Cool. Yeah. And what's what do you think something you've, you've learned a lot? Um, what have you enjoyed most about the job? I think the people. It's not just about... Um, I guess who's in the office and whatnot, but it's the cool stories that you get to hear about, you know, businesses and candidates and whatnot. And I think at the end of the day, it's where else would you rather be? It's, it's the cool, you know, stories that you can high five each other and go, great. That, you know, it's amazing that that person got to have their amazing wedding, or yes. it's great that that um, person got to go on that holiday, and or we get to live and breathe that whole experience as well. So yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. And you say you wouldn't do anything else. You love yeah. it. But there's always something in business. I believe there's always something in business that you hate doing. What do you hate doing in one Board shift? reports. I hate board, board reports. reports. <laughs> yes. I was a horrible student. Just ask my teachers. <laughs> they were like, Genevieve, just do your homework. And uh, I don't know. I just I, I leave it to the last minute every time. Yeah. I try and get as much information in. And yeah, I just, I'm horrible at it. Wow. And, yeah. and i got to ask, you're on the run. You're between Melbourne, Sydney... You, you're on the go, you've got, you're speaking in lots of gigs, you're all over the place. Hopefully you know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hopefully you do. I, I, I can't say how impressed I am with you. Yes. What, how do you maintain that? Like, do you use certain apps? Do you live on your mobile phone? How do you maintain some sanity? Um, I am physically attached to my phone. It's right over there and I am watching it as we speak. Um, look, I think you've just got to put it, everything in perspective. You know, okay. everybody's human. You've got to prioritise what's you know, the best opportunity to get done straight away so that you get the most impact for the okay. team. And it's enabling your team to get, you know, and leading them to be the best that they can be because the better your team is, the better that you can be. Um, so it means I'll fill up my day, pass all that stuff on to somebody else and then look for new opportunities so we can keep growing the business. So... Um, having that sort of agricultural sort of growth, I guess, no job descriptions and basically, right, this needs to be done. How do we get it done? I think that frees up my time more and more so that I could actually keep looking for the new and bigger opportunities. Nice. Yeah. Do you think you're a normal business? Or would you say that having not gone straight into running your own business out of university, that you have you don't have a sort of mindset of what has to be right for the business? Um, yeah, I guess we're the ugly duckling that's kind of still running around trying to figure it out, and I think it means that we're going ways that not normal businesses go. Yes. Um, but having um, great business, I guess, mentors, uh, like my parents have both started their own businesses multiple okay. times and kind of seeing that day-to-day -day and what that looks like, I think it's really impacted me and how a business should run. Um, my dad used to walk through uh, the factories and shake everybody's hand when I was like eight or four seven or however old I was and you know Frank how's your son going you know what's going on and having that relationship and mm. I think learning that from a young age of what's involved to get a meal on the table and the relationships that is are so important in your business um, has really implement, uh, affected I guess the way that we've grown the business. Beautiful and, and what is the goal moving forward for One Shift where what's your aspirations where are you hoping to take it what's what's the what's the plan? Global domination obviously. Global domination. Did One you, million you heard it, you heard it here right here on Village TV first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure um, you said it every morning you wake up like I'm oh, taking over the world <laughs> Pinky what are we going to do tonight <laughs> exactly. um, no we, we want to create a global community it's about enabling people to be able to you know jump on a plane um, on a cheap flight through us to New York work three weeks in it as an account manager at a PR company mm. go do something cool like climb the Empire State Building meet yeah. some other one shifters and um, I guess just enjoy life. It's it's where it's, the world's getting smaller. Technology ma is making things easier, so yeah. why not enjoy it? It's not about a career anymore. It's about life. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Now you're you've been an amazing entrepreneur. I think what you've achieved in such a short time frame has been absolutely amazing. So congratulations. Yeah. Um, what are some of the key points of advice you'd like to share to entrepreneurs out there yeah. that are trying to achieve maybe some similar successes to what you have? Uh, don't wait for it to happen, make it happen. Um, if it's 80% ready, it's good enough to get out there and just see what happens rather than being 100% ready and missing the race altogether. I think the biggest uh, differentiator between business ideas and everyone is that people have amazing ideas. Every day we speak to people and like, oh, I was going to do this and this. But it's the people who actually go out there and do it. Give it a go. Give it a crack. Start pe talking to people is really important. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably the number one thing I would push every day, any day to anyone. 
And you know, Jen, you've got such an amazing story. You started with a simple blog. You did it right. It was an amazing blog. It was an amazing <laughs> blog. But I guess the point is that it doesn't take a lot to try something. Yep, exactly. You can start somewhere small, get it going, see what the interest is, and then grow it from yep. there and build it up. So It's only as good as the effort that you put into it. There you go. Well done, Jane George. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on Village TV. Thanks we for love me. you sharing your story right here on Village TV. We wish you the best of luck. And I look forward to having you back here when you've taken over America. <laughs> exactly. $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you hop onto One Shift. Have a look at it. It's a great platform for SMEs out there who are looking for some part-time workers. Yep. There's lots of skills out there. You don't have to do everything, and you're probably better off outsourcing it half the time exactly. anyway. And give us feedback. Hit us up. Give me an email. Like, whatever. We want to know what's wrong, what's working, what's not. So, yeah, really encourage it. Beautiful. Jen George, thank you very much. Good luck in your successes. Thank you. And um, stay tuned to Village TV. Make sure you subscribe and get a lot more videos right here on Village TV with some amazing business owners just like Jen. We'll see you soon. Bye.